Hello, ballers! What's going on? It's Breacher! And we're going to start looking at DPS this week. I've got several number... Several number. I've got multiple things to look at on this subject in reference to what. So I thought we'd start with the super basics. Is how does your DPS work? What which was quite concerning is when the original idea for the legendary rings, which would be the random jumping proc, not a lot of people understood why that was a really, really terrible, awful, awful thing. There was so many who were like, ah, it sounds kind of fun, without the instant drawback that many of us knew was like, this is terrible, this is really bad. So in order to sort of cure that, for any of you who weren't really sure why that was a terrible thing, and how your DPS really works is what we're going to look at today, is why we do things like stack as many cooldowns as possible, why we're watching out for random procs, how that can affect our decision-making process, and how this leads you to be, ultimately, a far better player. Because in the world of WAD, since MOP, what happened at the end of MOP is that people had so many things that were proccing and had control over that they could produce outrageous amounts of damage. Blizzard decided to tone that down by adding in far more randomness. So they added in things like RPM, RPPM trinkets, more random procs, and less things that basically the user, the player, had control over, which would overall lower the amount of burst potential. But it also opens a window for better players to really take advantage of that as much as humanly possible. Not as much as previously, but we can still take advantage of that. Now, I think a lot of people do things when it comes to DPS because they see other people doing it. And they don't really understand why we're doing it. If I was to ask some people, is, why do we, is it better to stack all your cooldowns in one go or to have lots of procs all the time across the whole fight there are many people out there who might go um you know maybe it'd be nice to have really strong dps all the time rather than at one particular moment as that would no doubt lead to weak dps right outside of those windows no wrong 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 no don't do that <laughs> that's really bad the answer of course is we stack everything at uh, one time and, and now we're going to explain why we're going to do that now obviously in order to do this we're going to look at my roguey rogue wonderful transmog intentional and take it from his perspective now this is different for every single player in the game unless you have exactly the same gear it will be entirely different it all depends on your class it depends on many different variants so what i'm going to show you is the ideas that are going on with my rogue and then you should be able to easily apply them to your characters to get something similar. So what do I have control over, first of all? So this is the big question you always ask yourself, is what cooldowns do I have? Well, as my rogue is now, I have access to something called Shadow Dance, which is a one-minute cooldown, and Shadow Reflection, which is a two-minute cooldown. I also have access, as I am a beautiful Lady Orc, to Blood Fury, which is a two-minute cooldown, so instantly you'll recognize that Shadow Reflection and Blood Fury, those coincide with exactly the same times. And also, every second Shadow Dance, as that's a one-minute cooldown, I'll be able to Shadow Dance with Shadow Reflection and Blood Fury. Now, those are the things that I have naturally as a rogue. Okay, those are my rogue things. So, each and every one of you, depending on your class, will have access to something similar. So, you'll notice I was paying attention to the timings. Okay, two minutes, two minutes, one minute. All these things are very important. Because the next question we ask ourselves when we're looking at doing the best DPS we can do, assuming all things are equal in the fight is how long is the fight? So we ask that question, let's say it's seven minutes. Right, well with seven minutes I can do X amount of this and Y amount of that. And I can use that many cooldowns that long through the fight. Okay, so it's a very simple question as we look at how long the fight is, then you figure out what is the potential maximum amounts of uses I can get out of my cooldowns. It is always, and this is a golden rule for DPS, is it is always better to use your cooldowns more than less. It sounds stupid, but there are some cooldowns people hold on to because they get really wrapped up in the ideas I'm going to talk about shortly with waiting for the perfect moment. And in doing so, they actually miss out on a full use of a cooldown, especially when you have something as short as a one-minute cooldown. They're holding back, holding back because I'm waiting for everything to go right, and in doing so, you miss out on, say, a Shadow Dance, which would be horrendous. I don't want that to happen. You don't want that to happen. So the big question we always ask ourselves is, how long is this fight? How many times can I use my cooldowns in it? The next question we ask ourselves is, is there a point in this fight I need to have my cooldowns ready for? So there are various fights throughout Blackrock Foundry where that's the case. If you are, say, Iron Maidens and you're going up on the boat, you'll want your cooldowns for that moment. Um, are we bloodlusting at a certain percent? Okay, are we going to do that not at the pull? In which case, when are we doing it? I'm going to need that for that moment. And then you start to adjust when you use your cooldowns. Okay, so there's lots of planning that goes into the fight before you even engage. When are we going to do these? These are the questions you should be asking your raid leaders or working out for yourself if it's new progress. How long is this fight going to last? When do we need to burst? 
Is there a particular moment I need to have my cooldowns ready? That would be things like a Primal Elementalist, if you're doing Blast Furnace. The Runes on Clappy Handsman. Dogs on Flamebender. All these kind of things are moments when you'll need some form of big DPS boost. Therefore, I need my cooldowns. And then you ask yourself, how many times can I use my cooldowns before that? In order to make sure I have them for that point. And then you start to build a picture in your mind of how this fight will work for you. So this means that a couple of things occur. If you need your cooldowns for a specific t period of the fight, then you figure out when you can use your cooldowns outside that. And also, what is your leeway time? If it's, I can only use my cooldowns once before there to make sure they're back, is that because, uh, let's say we have a three minute cooldown and it occurs at four minutes. Your leeway time there is one minute. You have one minute to make a choice as to when to pop that cooldown without it being wasted and it definitely being back up. Leeway time is very important. Because that's the time between not missing out on using a cooldown. Yeah? And still getting the maximum amount of benefit out of those cooldowns. Okay? So this is very, very important. Knowing your leeway time can make you not that guy who just blows his cooldowns immediately. That's the point of knowing your leeway time. Oh, my cooldowns back up. I better use them now. That's not always a good idea. It's not always a good idea. You can now play around with how long you have to wait. Sometimes it could be as small as 10 seconds, honestly, depending on the length of the fight. And sometimes it could be upwards of 50 seconds. You have all these periods of time to play with. So you really have to think about that idea. Okay, so those are the basics. We build a picture of our fight. So for the remainder of this video, we will be assuming we can use our cooldowns whenever the hell we please. Now, how do we get the most out of these cooldowns? We obviously can only use them a certain amount of time. So how do we get the most out of them? So now we need to look at what else occurs. With my character at the moment, I have certain procs. So I have Weapon Enchants. Okay, Mark of the Frost Wolf. These are going to increase my multi-strike. I have the Beating Heart of the Mountain. Now note, this is an unuse with two-minute cooldowns. Aha, Preacher, I see where you're going with this. Correct. This now lines up perfectly with Shadow Reflection and my Blood Fury. And my second Shadow Dance. Every second Shadow Dance. So every second Shadow Dance, now I have Shadow Reflection, Blood Fury, and the Beating Heart of the Mountain while under the effects of Shadow Dance. That sounds good, right? I have a random proc, which is my Dragon Spine Trophy, which will give me haste. The purpose of which, generally, is to increase my energy and give, allow me to get more uses out of things. So, And I also have the Ring, so that's going to give me Incandescence, which is a 15% agility increase. Okay, so that increases my overall damage. On top of that, it's down to how my gear is normally. I'm going to ignore things like flasks and food and all that kind of stuff because that's just stuff that goes on. So what are we looking at? How do we decide why we should... Let me explain first why we should stack our cooldowns. I have these procs. So let me explain this. Firstly, what just flat out increases my damage? That would be my ring. Okay? My ring and potion. Potion gives me an extra 1,000 agility. Okay, my ring gives me another 15% on top of that. So now I'm hitting harder than I can possibly hit anywhere, any other time in the fight. Under the effects of a potion and my ring, every single attack I do hits harder than it can possibly do at any other time in the fight. Okay? That's something to bear in mind. That's what's occurring when these two stack up. So those are your baseline of things that increase just your flat damage. Next, I have to take into account random things. That would be my weapon enchants, okay? The haste proc, don't worry about it too much for me, and you'll figure out for your class there are some procs which aren't that important to lining up for a massive burst. So I have my ring proc, okay? My ring proc and a potion on, so this would be a generally beginning of the fight type scenario. Now what's happening is uh, my weapons are proc. So now I've increased my chances to multi-strike. My next step is to multi-strike as much as possible. And due to the fact that my attacks now hit harder than ever they can because of my potion and my ring, is now to put as many attacks as possible while under these effects. I also want those attacks to be the hardest attacks I can possibly muster. So that would where Shadow Dance comes in, which allows me to spam Ambush. Okay? It allows me to spam Ambush. During this period with my ring and potion, my Ambush will hit as hard as it can possibly hit. It's as simple as that. So the next step is, obviously, I want to put as many in as possible. That's where things like Dragon Spine Trophy come in and Bloodlust. The purpose that we Bloodlust everybody under these effects is because generally they gain more attacks while they are at their most powerful than at any other time in the fight. 
That haste allows them to cast more spells. As simple as that. Your spells will hit as hard as they possibly can. So with that extra haste, you should be able to cast more of them. Therefore doing way, way more damage than you can do other times. Because of my multi-strike, and I will be using my unused trinket and blood fury, which again increases my flat out damage, I have way, way higher multi-strike than I ordinarily have. As you can see, I have 33% multi-strike here. If I was to go and attack, watch my multi-strike. See, it's up to 149%. Straight off, oh, that's due to this ridiculous Shaman Stone buff. Get away from me. So that goes up to 50%. And if I then use my unused trinket, 73%. Okay? So I jump my multi-strike outrageously high. So what I'm doing now is I have my attacks which hit harder than ever before. Okay? And not only that, I'm spamming my hardest hitting ability, which will be Ambush in this case. And not only that, but I have such high multi-strike that all those hardest hitting abilities possible will now multi-strike far more often than normal so they get all sorts of stacking benefits and this is why we stack cooldowns like this this is why it happens because while we're under all these effects i am going to hit harder i'm going to hit more often than i possibly could and not only that with my setup i'm going to be multi-striking with that hard hitting ability far more often than ever before now, with all these things combined, guys, now you can start to see why we stack up cooldowns. Because everything bounces off each other. Everything lines up nicely. Now, with our PPMs, what you'll notice is some people have crazy UIs, right? With all sorts of random stuff going on. Now, I tend not to need that because I, I, I can pay attention. I tend to monitor my cooldowns and I don't have many as a sub rogue. I've got a couple to monitor. So I can kind of pay attention to what's going on with my character. I can see the icon for Mark of the Frost Wolf, all that kind of stuff going on. And I can see, you know, it's pretty obvious. And I also have it pop up here to know when my procs have gone on. This is where your leeway time comes in. Because the only things, and this is the same for many classes, the only things I have control over are my Shadow Dance, my Shadow Reflection, my Blood Fury, and my Trinket. Those are the only things I have control of. The things I don't have control of are both my Weapon Enchants and my Ring, and my Trinket. I don't have control over those abilities. I have nothing. I can't do anything about them. They will proc when they want to proc. Now, knowing my leeway time, I can set up more windows throughout the fight where I'm going to use my things I have control over while under the effects of these procs. And this is why you'll see many people with crazy UIs tracking all their trinkets and stuff. This is why they do it. Because it's far better for me to shadow dance with preferably all my procs like this Frostwolf one now. It's far better for me to do that than it is to do it without it. Okay? Pretty simple. It's far better for me to do it under the effects of a Dragon Spine trophy where I'll get more ambushes out than to not do it. And this is why some people will always have more damage than you given same gear. Because they're using their abilities while paying attention to these abilities. And I'm like, oh, my ring's propped. So what will occur, because we know our leeway time that we talked about earlier, is my Shadow Dance will come off cooldown. I know I probably have 30 seconds to play with in this fight. So I'm going to use those 30 seconds. I'm going to go, okay, I've got Shadow Dance ready. And what I'm going to do is I'm kind of going to wait. And I'm going to go, oh, shit, ring and fucking trinket propped. Uh, weapons and trinket and ring prox. Shit, now we should shadow dance. And I'm going to get all these ambushes out under the effects of these. Yeah? I'm getting all these shadow dances out. And then when that's over, it'll go back to the normal period of time. Assuming it's going to run out in two seconds. And I'll get out another weapon prop, but it's only the one. And hang on. I'm getting lucky prox, as always the case, guys. The raiders will know you get your prox at all the wrong time. Um, but um, without those effects, yeah? So I could either pop it on cooldown and it'd be like sort of weak sauce right? Without much going on. I don't have many special buffs or anything like that. Or I could just use that leeway time. And I can be like, okay, I have some time to play with here. Let me wait and see what happens in, say, the next 10 seconds. So I can go 10. In my head, I'm kind of going 10, 9, 8. Nothing happening here. You can see this is all shit. It's 9, 8. Oh, weapon procs. Oh, yeah, I'm tempted to go with that because it's got the multi-strike on it. Oh, shit, double proc. Definitely going now. And that's the decision-making process, right? That's the decision-making process we're having. 
And this is why it's so important that you understand that when you add something like the Legendary Ring suggestion, which was crazy in terms of a 50% damage buff that can hit you at any time, anywhere, that throws everything out the window because we've made decisions on leeway time, how many times I can use my cooldowns, when they're supposed to line up, watching for procs. And we're making all these advanced decisions. And then, of course, you throw in some ridiculously uh, overpowered proc that can occur at any time, which nullifies all this thinking process. It makes it entirely pointless because if it, that damage increase is so stupid that we might as well wait for it. And then it makes the whole game way less interesting. The DPS game is very, very, very interesting if you're doing it right. We don't need to pop our cooldowns on cooldown. We need to think about it. We need to know how much time we're allowed to think about it. Do I need to use it immediately in order to have it up for the next stage? All these things are very interesting. I also hope now you understand why we stack our cooldowns up. And look at your character. I really suggest you look at your character and figure out exactly what is happening when your procs are going. Because some of them will mean way more to you than others. And this is an important step. While certain things are obviously a DPS increase... Yeah, you also have to ask yourself, well, how good of a DPS increase is it compared to my weapons? How good a DPS increase is it compared to my ring? Which one do I actually via, uh, prioritize more than others? Do I just go with whatever? Do I just go with a proc when I see it? Or is it not relevant? A good example would be a destruction warlock if you had some sort of haste proc which isn't that amazing for a Destruction Warlock, okay? If you're looking to fire a Chaos Bolt off, Haste is probably the last thing on your mind, and therefore you're going to hold back a little bit in that process. So I hope that sets the stage for the next upcoming videos, guys, and explaining how DPS works, why we stack our cooldowns, why it's important to monitor these things, and really assess what is happening with your character so you understand why you're doing it. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.